Snoozecast, the podcast designed to help you fall asleep. Find us at snoozecast.com and now also on YouTube. This episode is dedicated to listeners who asked for more King Arthur, like Stephen and Nicole, and also brought to you by Naps Under Oak Trees. Tonight, we'll read another story from our King Arthur series. This one, Peleus and Itard, comes from a book written by Mary McGregor. If you'd like to listen to this whole anthology easily in order, go to snoozecast.com slash series. Let's get cozy. Close your eyes. Relax your body into the softness of your bed. Now, take a few deep breaths. Far away, in a dreary land, there lived a lad called Peleus. The men were rough, and the women grave in the dreary land where Peleus lived. To this faraway country, there had come tales of the happy lords and ladies of Arthur's court. Peleus heard, in great astonishment, that the men in Arthur's country were brave and gentle, and that the women smiled. He would go away from his own land, he thought, and see these strange and happy people. Soon, the rough men in his country laughed at Peleus, for he began to grow brave and gentle, like the knights who were so often in his thoughts. And the grave women looked at each other in surprise as they saw the lad's bright face and caught the smile on his lips. Peleus had been dreaming about the cheerful ladies he had heard of, till some of their gladness had passed into his face. When he was older, Peleus left his country and all the land that belonged to him there. He would take his horse and his sword and ask the great King Arthur, to make him one of his knights, for had he not learned knightly ways from the wonderful tales he had heard long ago? After many days, Peleus reached the court, and when the king had listened to the young man's story and had seen his beauty and strength, he gladly made him his knight. Then, Peleus was ready to begin his adventures. He would go to Carleon, where, for three days, the king's tournament was to be held. The king had promised a golden circlet and a good sword to the knight who showed himself the strongest. The golden circlet was to be given to the fairest lady in the field, and she was to be called the Queen of Beauty. On his way to Carleon, Peleus rode along a hot and dusty road. There were no trees to shelter him from the scorching sun, but he rode on steadfastly, for he knew that a great shady forest lay before him. When at last Peleus reached the forest, he was so hot and tired that he dismounted and, tying his horse to a tree, he lay down gratefully under a large oak and fell asleep. Sounds of laughter and merriment woke him and, opening his eyes, he saw a group of maidens close by. Peleus was bewildered. 
Could they be wild woodland nymphs, he thought, as, only half awake, he lay there and watched them flitting in and out among the tall trees. They wore bright dresses, blue and yellow and purple, and to Peleus the forest seemed all aglow. The maidens were talking together and looking first in one direction and then in another. They were lost in the forest on their way to the great tournament at Carleon. Then the lost maidens caught sight of the knight lying half asleep under the oak tree. He will be able to show us the way, they said joyfully to one another, for they guessed that he too was on his way to the tournament. I will speak to the knight, said the lady Etard, the tallest and most beautiful of all the maidens, and she left the others and went towards Peleus. But when she told the knight that she and her lords and ladies had lost their way, and asked him to tell her how to reach Carleon, he only looked at her in silence. Was she one of the woodland nymphs? Was he still dreaming, and was she the lady of his dreams? As the lady still stood there, he roused himself and tried to speak. But because he was bewildered by her beauty, he stammered and answered foolishly. The lady Etard turned to the merry lords and ladies who had followed her. The knight cannot speak, though he is so strong and good-looking she said scornfully. But Sir Peleus was wide awake at last. He sprang to his feet and told the Lady Etard that he had been dreaming and that she had seemed to him a part of his dream. But I too am going to Carleon, he added, and I will show you the way. And as they rode through the forest, Sir Peleus was always at his lady's side. When the branches were in her way, he pushed them aside. When the path was rough, he guided her horse. In the evening, when the lady Etard dismounted, Peleus was there to help her. And in the morning again, it was Peleus who brought her horse and helped her to mount. Now the Lady Etard was a great lady in her own land. Knights who had fought many battles and won great fame had served her, and she cared nothing for the young, untried knight's love and service. Still, he looked so strong that I will pretend to care for him, she thought, and then perhaps he will try to win the golden circlet for me, and I shall be called the Queen of Beauty. For the Lady Etard was a vain lady, and cared more for the golden circlet and to be called the Queen of Beauty than for the happiness of the young knight Peleus. And so, for many days, the Lady Etard was kind to Sir Peleus, and at last she told him that she would love him if he would win the golden circlet for her. The Lady of my dreams will love me, the knight murmured, and aloud he said proudly that if there were any strength in his right arm, he would win the prize for the Lady Etard. Then 
The lords and ladies that were with the tard pitied the young knight, for they knew their lady only mocked him. At last, they all reached Carlion, and the next morning, the tournament began. And the lady at Tard watched her knight merrily, as each day he overcame and threw from their horses twenty men. The circlet will be mine, she whispered to her lords and ladies. But they looked at her coldly, for they knew how unkindly she would reward Sir Peleus. At the end of three days, the tournament was over, and King Arthur proclaimed that the young knight Peleus had won the golden circlet and the sword. Then, in the presence of all the people, Sir Peleus took the golden circlet and handed it to the Lady Attard, saying aloud, that she was the fairest lady on the field and the queen of beauty. The lady Attard was so pleased with her prize that for a day or two she was kind to her knight. But soon she grew tired of him and wished that she might never see him again. Still, even when she was unkind, Sir Peleus was happy, for he trusted the beautiful lady and said to himself, She proves me to see if I really love her. But the lady at heart knew she would never love Sir Peleus, even if he died for her. Then her ladies grew angry as they saw how she mocked the knight, for they knew that greater and fairer ladies would have loved Sir Peleus for his strength and great knightliness. I will go back to my own country, said the Lady Attard, and see my faithful knight no more. When Peleus heard that the Lady Attard was going home, he was glad. He remembered the happy days he had spent as they rode together through the forest, and he looked forward to other happy days in the open air when he could again shield the lady from the roughness of the road. But when the lady at hard saw that Sir Peleus was following her into her own country, she was angry. I will not have the knight near me, she said proudly to her ladies. I will have an older warrior for my love. And they knew their lady's cruel ways, and in pity kept the knight away. As they rode along, the days seemed long to Peleus, for he neither saw nor spoke to the Lady Attard. When she got near her own castle, she rode on more swiftly, telling her lords and ladies to follow her closely. The drawbridge was down, and the Lady Attard rode across it, and waiting only until her lords and ladies crossed it, ordered the bridge to be drawn up while Peleus was still on the other side. The knight was puzzled. Was this a test of his love, too, or did the lady for whom he had won the golden circlet indeed not care for him? But that he would not believe. She will grow kinder if I am faithful, he thought and he lived in a tent beneath the castle walls for many days. The Lady Attard heard that Peleus still lingered near the castle, and in her anger she said, 
I will send ten of my lords to fight this night, and then I shall never see his face again. But when Peleus saw the ten lords coming towards him, he armed himself and fought so bravely that he overthrew each of them. But after he had overthrown them, he allowed them to get up and to bind him hand and foot and carry him into the castle. For they will carry me into the presence of the Lady Etard, he thought. But when she saw Peleus, the Lady Etard mocked him and told her lords to tie him to the tail of a horse and turn him out of the castle. She does it to find out if I love her truly, thought Sir Peleus again, as he struggled back to his tent below the castle. Another ten lords were sent to fight the faithful knight, and again Peleus overthrew them, and again he let himself be bound and carried before the Lady Etard. But when she spoke to him even more unkindly than before, and mocked at his love for her, Sir Peleus turned away. If she were good as she is beautiful, she could not be so cruel, he thought sadly. And he told her that though he would always love her, he would not try to see her any more. Now, one of King Arthur's knights, called Sir Gawain, had been riding past the castle when the ten lords attacked Sir Peleus. And Sir Gawain had looked on in dismay. He had seen the knight overthrow the ten lords and stand there quietly while the conquered men got to their feet. He had seen them bind him hand and foot and carry him into the castle. Tomorrow I will look for him and offer him my help, thought Sir Gawain, for he was sorry for the brave young knight. The next morning he found Sir Peleus in his tent, looking very sad. And when Sir Gawain asked the knight why he was so sad, Sir Peleus told him of his love for the Lady Etard and of her unkindness. I would rather die a hundred times than be bound by her lords, he said, if it were not that they take me into her presence. Then, Sir Gawain cheered Sir Peleus and offered to help him, for he too was one of Arthur's knights. And Sir Peleus trusted him, for had not all King Arthur's knights taken the vows of brotherhood and truth? Give me your horse and armor, said Sir Gawain. I will go to the castle with them and tell the Lady Etard that I have slain you. Then she will ask me to come in, and I will talk of your great love and strength till she learns to love you. And Sir Gawain rode away, wearing the armor and helmet of Sir Peleus, and promising to come back in three days. The Lady Etard was walking up and down outside the castle when she saw the knight approaching. Sir Peleus again, she thought angrily, and turned to go into the castle. But Sir Gawain called to her to stay. I am not Sir Peleus, but a knight who has slain him. Take off your helmet and let me see your face, said the Lady Etard as she turned to look at him. When she saw that it was really a strange knight, she took him into her castle. 
Because you have slain Sir Peleus, whom I hated, I will love you, said the cruel Lady Attard. Sir Gawain saw how beautiful the lady was, and he forgot her unkindness to Sir Peleus, and he loved her. And because he was not a true knight, Sir Gawain did not think of Peleus, who waited so anxiously for his return. Three days passed, but he did not go back and in the castle all was joy and merriment. Six days passed, and still Sir Gawain stayed with the beautiful Lady Attard. At last, Sir Peleus could bear his loneliness no longer. That night, he went up to the castle and swam across the river, when he reached the front of the castle, he saw a great many tents, and all the lords and ladies were asleep in their tents, and Sir Gawain was there too. He has forgotten me, and will stay here always with the Lady Attard, muttered Sir Peleus in scorn, and he drew the sword he had won at the tournament to slay the false knight, Sir Gawain. Then, all at once, he remembered the vows he had taken when the great king had knighted him, and slowly he sheathed his sword and went gloomily down to the river. But Sir Peleus could not make up his mind to go away, and again he turned and went back to the tent, where Sir Gawain lay, still asleep. Once more, Sir Peleus drew his sword and laid it across the false knight's bare neck. When Sir Gawain woke in the morning, he felt the cold steel, and, putting up his hand, he found the sword that Sir Peleus had left. Sir Gawain did not know how the sword had come there, but when he told the Lady Attard what had happened and showed her the sword, she knew it was the one that Sir Peleus had won at the tournament when he had given her the golden circlet. You have not slain the knight who loved me, cried the Lady Attard, for he has been here and left his sword across your throat. And then she hated Gawain because he had told her a lie, and she drove him from her castle. And the Lady Attard thought of her true knight, Sir Peleus, and at last she loved him with all her heart. But when he had left his sword across Sir Gawain's throat, Peleus had gone sadly back to his tent and, taking off his armor, had lain down to die. Then the knight's servant was in great distress because his master would neither eat nor sleep, but lay in his tent getting more pale and more thin, day by day. And the servant was wandering sadly along the bank of the river, wondering how he could help his master, when he met a beautiful maiden called the Lady of the Lake. The maiden asked why he looked so sad, and, won by her gentleness, he told her how his master had been hated by the Lady Attard and betrayed by the false knight, Sir Gawain. Bring me to your master, said the Lady of the Lake. And when she had come to the tent and saw Sir Peleus, she loved him. I will send him to sleep, 
she murmured, and when he wakes, he will be well. And she threw an enchantment over him, and he slept. When Peleus awoke, he felt strong once more, and at last he knew that the cruel Lady Etard had never been the lady of his dreams, and he loved her no longer. But when the Lady Etard knew that Sir Peleus loved her no more, she wept sorrowfully and died of her grief. Then the gentle Lady of the Lake asked Peleus to come with her to her own beautiful lake land. And as they rode together, her simple kindness made the night happy again. And he learned to love the Lady of the Lake and they lived together and loved each other all their lives long.